Good day, everybody. This is Dragon Lover Maniac. Thomas the Train. That's a random person, Steam name. <laughs> okay. And today I'm continuing with Emrus. 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 Let's see. My entertainment, my entertainment center for the last few weeks. It's the exact same thing. Okay. Hopefully, no one's in the bathroom this time. Oh, we can get to explore the house. Uh, how do I get back? Well then, uh, okay. So, <laughs> it's gonna find it interesting that, uh, let's see. Sky is, Sky is still not available. Come on. Contact you. So, it's like calling Kobe. He's actually in home. Oh, <laughs> it's gonna. I'm gonna have to say that um, is really dating that hard. Well, people say dating is hard, <laughs> but if you actually keep pursuing enough, then you can actually get the person you actually like. And there is one thing I'm kind of bit. Um, I'm just gonna be bloody open for your bloody entertainment. Um, I admit it. If I was a female in my age, I would be asking to be my girlfriend. Cause that's how much she made me happy. Cause like if. It's kind of like, we're like one of those cliche, um, dating things. Like, he keep pursuing with me, trying to make me open, trying to make me happy and stuff. Like, if, it's kind of like, we're one of those dating things. And voila, he actually made me that open. Like, <laughs> but, even though it's cliche, but, if people actually do their best to make the person happy, instead of just caring about how their pride and stuff is, then make the other one happy then the better chance of succeeding that's what he did he sacrificed some sanity for me even though he admits that he's already messed up but still it's good that someone gives out themselves for others which is i'm very happy that he did for me let's call him that should be long enough so i spill every oh wait Dang it! I forgot to turn off all of Um... <gasps> um... Give me a minute to sing. <laughs> Turning off all. I breeze the... I appreciate the sentiment. Perhaps a few more minutes to digest everything is appreciated. I don't know who the heck I like that quickly. Besides, should I really be calling the morning after I just met them? All a bit much for you, eh? You know, they aren't gonna bite. The, the, these kind of folks don't hang around singles for too long. I should know. You're not going to go this far only to get cold feet now, aren't you? Climbing, climbing was the hard part. All you gotta do today is say hi. Oh, Steph, I was starting out sound like more like Dominic. No, Daryl, but I gotta make him. Yeah. I guess I'm being a little cyn cynical. Come back in five. That should be long enough, so spill everything. Meet everyone cute that you're you're thinking about seeing again or what? Admit feelings for Kobe. Kobe, I gotta be honest. Going out together last night was never really about meeting anyone new. Oh, why did you go then? 
I went because I wanted to spend time not with others, but to spend time with you. M me? But we barely saw each other last night. I wanted to know for sure you were the one. I know this was the wrong choice. <laughs> You're my bloody brother! I'm... <laughs> I swear, if this is heading where I think it's heading, I'm gonna go like, Nope, exit out, you're my brother, I'm not doing that to my own brother. Nope, 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 nope. <laughs> I wanted no doubts on my mind before I said something like this. I'm not quite sure what you're going with this. Bro, are you coming to me? I think I have feelings for you, Kobe. I think I always had. Oh, come on, you don't mean that. Wouldn't be the first time you've teased me for being too gullible. I know the kind of people you are into. It's not flamers like me. I'm not pulling you or a leg this time. You kind of make my heart race every time you come over. Okay. <laughs> Okay. That was a bad idea. I knew that focusing on his writing was going to eat up Seth's time, but this was getting absurd. It seemed like forever. No phone calls, no texts, nothing. It was enough to make me question if I hadn't been just confused about the singles I read. I thought we had a connection. He was certainly interested in me, but this... THIS undermined the whole idea! Why else would he just leave me hanging? Maybe he really didn't, did just want some temporary company. Kobe was there for me. We even went to the club a couple of nights to see if Seth had sewn back up there. Sadly, there was no sign of him. Eventually, I'd given up and just slumped it on the couch and lost myself in daytime television. I, was nor not, I wasn't normally like this, but putting myself out there was to wind up for, with nothing. It was a hard thing to just bounce back from. I know I'd eventually have to pick myself back up, but for now it felt comfortable just to wallow. Kobe was in the shower, and I had just finished watching the fifth re re run in a row when there was a knock on the front door. My instinct, my instinct was to ignore it. I couldn't think of anyone who might be stopping by. As the second knock eventually got me off the couch and stumbling towards the door. I half expected to be some local group doing fundraising. At this point, I was feeling low enough that wolfing down a box of cookies sounded like a good idea. Emery! I'm so glad it was the right house. Seth? What the heck are you doing here? How did you know where I lived? Why didn't you call? Well... Uh, not calling was due me my being a scattered brain. When we partied, when we parted ways, my head was buzzing with a million ideas. I had to get them out before they drove me crazy. And the one of those ideas involved losing my number. Indirectly, yes. I tossed my pants in the wash before I went to bed. Like I normally do. I'd forgotten your number was in my pocket. So I started the machine in the morning and... By the time I realized my mistake, all that remained was a shoggy lamp of paper. Lump of paper. Okay... But why didn't you stop by the club or anything? I checked a couple of times and you and didn't see you. I was clustered in my apartment, substained on delivery food and coffee. In retrospect, it could have been something strange out of a novel I read. It was 
intense. It just kept pouring out of me. I never thought I it was like that. What came out of you? And you still haven't explained how you found my address. I mean, I'm a little upset you didn't call, but not about this. I think it's just weird. That? Oh, that I could write a whole story about. It was... Me! I found him for you. Kobe? What? Kobe! Thanks again. You're a lightsaber. Last night, I overheard him at the bar asking about you. You'd mention a cute feline you've been seeing. You called me cute? I'm... Anyway, I mentioned you were my brother. He got a... to talking for a bit, and I told him how down in the dumps you were lately. I felt terrible about that. I mean, I was a little flattered that you were pinning for me. My cheeks began to flush red as I stim stammered out a, a defense. I wasn't pinning! I was just sad. Since I hadn't heard from you in so long. I told him that he should drop by today and catch back up with you. Maybe get you off the couch for a while. And here I am! Groovily on bended knees. I could not tell you how amazing that first time together was. I wouldn't want you to think I'd just leave it at that. First time? First time doing what, huh? Both me and Seth flushed profusely as Kobe began to laugh. <laughs> you two are way too easy to embarrass. <laughs> I think it's I'm going to like the idea of Seth and you, bro. Kobe, how about you go make some coffee for us all? Seth and I need talk. Alright, alright. I know when I'm no longer needed. You are right about him. He's, he is quite the character. He's my brother. We have always been there for each other. He does get a little nosy about my personal life sometimes, however. It's good to have someone who cares about you. You still haven't told me what kept you locked up by yourself for so long. It wasn't something bad, was it? Bad? Not in, not in, not in, bad? Not in the least. Without another word, he turned away and began digging through his book bag. A moment later, he handed me a pile of papers, all neatly collected and held together with a binded clip. My arms almost sagged at the weight. <laughs> there it is. All thanks to you and your brilliant inspiration te techniques. What is all of it? Am I still not getting it? It's the story we talked about. I sat down and wrote it. Beginning to end. It's true, it had been a while, but this was nearly a rim of paper I was holding. The amount of work and time was suggested world be mind-boggling. Would be mind-boggling. <laughs> God dang! I'm not doing any cards, I'm just showing you how bad I am at reading sometimes. For you to get a laugh at me or saying, I love it. Nevertheless, there it was. A title page and thousands of words that followed. Wow, you must have been really inspired. How do you do how did you do this? Hmm. hmm. Wow, you must have been really inspired to, to get this much done. When you when you suggested I give you an idea to write, I didn't expect it would completely consume you. I know. I've never been this driven before. Maybe it was your encouragement, or your practically, practically. I just know that when I got got home, I was focused like I'd never been before. Kind of how me and Putt's story line is gonna be. <laughs> I'm really connecting to this way for this character more. Honestly, 
I didn't know what to make of any of this. I had mostly thought it was just some lark, like his interview. Interview. The pile of papers in my hands suggest otherwise. I want you to read it. Not this very second, of course, but go the whole thing. Go bit, but go through the whole thing. And don't worry, no more radio silence for me. Kobe showed me how to program your number into my phone, and I won't be losing that anytime soon. Whew, that's quite a bit of work. Nothing against what you've accomplished. It's monumental, but that would be way too much to read in one sitting. Again, with the practically, still, I haven't even lost room to complain than before. I've never been able to sit down and write like that. That said, I'm happy to see you and I'm not kicking you out. Would you like some brunch or something? I'm sure you could use some home-cooked food after all that work takeout. I was happy to catch up with Seth. Even with Kobe listening in intensely, we had some pancakes-like conversation. And once Kobe had gotten a few pages of Seth's work away from the pile, he insisted we sit down and read the whole thing. It was astounding. The introductive tone was going and there was a covenant to it that I hadn't seen in the snippets he had start shared with me. I began to feel awkward for having a such profound effect in so little of time. Oh, believe me. If you try hard enough, it is possible. Part of example for me, how much he focused on making me open, even though it took a longer amount of time, but yeah, just a little, like I always say, just the littlest amount of things can make a big effect for someone else, and clearly this is like one of the examples. Eventually, once the dishes were cleared, we got to chatting about more than just writing. Is it wise to invite me to your bedroom so soon? Did you have some ulterior motive I was unaware of? Well, no. I mean, none of that I could would act on. I mean... I got the feeling there is something else you want to tell me. It wasn't... It isn't all about the writing. Don't get me wrong. You've been an amazing inspiration, but... I wanted to know if there was something more. Something more? Like... I... I mean... I'm attracted to you. You're attractive. There... I said it. Wow. It feels good to get that off my chest. And not too bad to hear, I admit. I'm just baffled. Did you think I was only after you for your writing skills and impressive nature? Well, I like his personality, he is. I suppose not. On some deeper level, I just got in my signals crossed before and... It's not important. It's more important that we are on the same page. And that I gave you a proper day next time. I look forward to it. Not that I didn't enjoy our conversations, but it's nice to be wind up, wind and dined as well. Something romantic and intimate would be great. It's a date! Or it will be. I'll just need some time to plan. I'm not practically well versed at this sort of thing. Fair enough, but don't leave me hanging like that again. I can't... I can only take so much before I have to hunt you down and force you to buy me some chocolates. <laughs> you say that like it's a bad thing. Still, we don't need to wait to have a good time. Unemployment is still looming large over me. You seem pretty free today, and there's something you would like to do? This is pretty nice. He looked so adorable when his cheeks were flushed. I leaned over to ruffle his ears. So, you just wanted to stay cooped up in someone else's bedroom? Not just someone's. We are specifically. Why am I specifically? More ulterior motives? 
people added. Well, I, w I would say, well, I'm flattered. That's what I was saying. I'm flattered. There are still far better places to be than here, though. Practically since my brother leaves his things lying around. It's very lived in. Not something I can usually say about my place. You know, I've never gotten to see your place. I imagine it's quite nice. It's serviceable, but Spartan. I'm afraid I'm not terribly good at domestic sides of things. What do you mean? Domestic side of things? What does that mean? Well, I never really learned how to cook for one thing. I've also never been much of a shopper. I tend to just get what I need at that moment. My foresight may be a bit lacking in that regard. So, I don't know. Not much of a cooker either. I make spaghetti. At times. Yeah. Too much spaghetti. But I do cook other things, but not that much. I say spaghetti too much. My favorite food is soccer, not spaghetti. Don't get me wrong, I dear. Never learned to cook? Not even re ramen or oatmeal? The microwave is about my extent of my cooking skills. <laughs> Poor thing. And even then, I ran the risk of setting myself on fire. I didn't see the point, I suppose, in getting tired to where you live. Life changed properly. You moved often, don't you? Sometimes I thought that way. Makes sense. That thing just distracted me while I was trying to do. I forgot what the <laughs> way. I actually had to reread what he said. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I think that way too. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Being adopted, it can feel a little like you don't really have a home. I know looking at, pit, at the pictures of my parents, seeing the pictures of Kobe's when he was younger, he used to make me feel disconnected. Yeah, feeling like trapped in my own home. I'm saying it like a bad thing, but I'm doing it just to make my mom happy. I'm a good boy. I want to make sure my mom's ha happy as best as I can, but sometimes I fall under stress and... Mm. Make us feel like I'm being bad, but she is happy that that I take care of her. She appreciates it. So, yeah, hopefully my life changes soon, so I can have a happy life. But Putt's helping me fill in that void until then. And he has to be helping me be more open. I know I keep saying it a lot, but that's how much he means to me. He's a great friend. I can see that being difficult for me and my family, it was just dri different drives. My father liked to work and my mother liked to be a mother. It worked out well for them, but when I decided to get my degree in English, there were discussions. As the two of us got to chattering, it made me realize just how little we really knew about each other. Seth was really happy to share, and he brought out some things of my own that I hadn't thought about in a long time. I know it sounded cliche, but being the only child and having expectations piled on, you can be a farbius in, in its own way. Some part of me thinks that I'll never be anything but a disappointment footnote for my parents. Well, not much of. Well, mine's kind of the opposite. It's like because of my disabilities, my parents were, and my own dad thinks that probably I'm not gonna do very much. And but I keep surprising them like how much I can. Cause my job was really hard, and my dad didn't think I would achieve it. But then now my, cook boss saying that if there was employment, of the months he would have chosen me. How much I shun my dad thinking he that I was not. Good enough. <laughs> if you just work hard enough and try your best, you can achieve things. <laughs> but yeah, you just gotta try. 
Well, that's not a healthy line of thought. Mine's mine is never a healthy line. I'm a all in depression. Parents can be more forgiving than you think. Mine trusts me to keep Kobe in line, but he's also keeps me from staying sad for too long. They know we were a good fit, and they told me it was one of the reasons they chose me. Maybe you just haven't given yours enough time to come to two turns with your choices. True that, true that. <clears throat> Maybe so, I suppose if I'm not great at reading people, I may not have good, been good at reading them. Goodness knows, once college started I all but vanished from their lives. <laughs> you just had to get lost in your own head. You can't have experienced everything yet. So you can't expect to know everything either. Do that again. Well, before we get too deep into depressive pit, I think we should change the subject. Why? I was. It makes me experience who I am too. <laughs> Fair enough. Did you give any more thought to getting your stuff published? I thought you might have forgotten about that suggestion. Oh no, I didn't. <gasps> no, I haven't really been looking into places to publish. Well, why not? This is practically practically is some of your best work. You need to at least put yourself out there and give it a try. I would have I wouldn't even know there where to begin. There I wouldn't have even know where to begin. This is the first substantial piece I've written since I graduated. I don't even know if it's even any good. What about self-publishing? If you're concerned about getting picked up, why not just self-publish? I hear it's super easy now. It is. But it's also flooded with everyone else who wants to be a writer. I'd be fighting against hundreds if not thousands of other people without that much to make me stand out. Believe me, your writing stands out. Kobe's the least bookish person I know, and he couldn't put it down. Thanks, but even if it is good, it'll be buried in the sea of other books. I'd help if someone with some visibility could boost it or plug it, which brings me back to square one. I couldn't bear to see him giving up so soon after accomplishing so much. We talked for a while longer. <laughs> Kinda feels like my depression. <laughs> Glancing at the manuscript and back at each other until I remembered. What about the author we saw? Um... Dick? We could talk to him. He was mentioning that he had another reading sometime soon. You got to be kidding. I mean, he's likely getting swarmed with fans wanting him to proof their stories. Why would he give me at the time of day? Because it's a start. Just like with writing, you've got to take a chance and put words down on a blank page. Worse he'll do say Worst he'll do is say no, and I'll buy another copy of his book so he doesn't eject us. Us? You're coming with me? Of course! I got you inspired enough to write all that. The least I can do is be there to try to help you make something out of it. His eyes went wide for a moment. His lips trampled cutely as he stared at me. In a moment, he was on top of me, hugging me tightly and burying his face in my neck. It took him a moment, in the rather awkward feeling in my pants before he pulled back. God dang it. Get your mind out of the gutter. I need to do that more often. <laughs> then let's do it! Come hell or high water, I'm going to see my name in print! Good! He smiled broadly. He seemed most in himself when he was excited, and I was growing to enjoy that about him more and more. Good. Keep him positive. Excuse me. <laughs> we checked the library schedule and found out when the next reading was, and if we left the house immediately, we could just make it. 
We said our goodbyes to Kobe, leaving him with a cup of coffee and a confused look before jumping in the car. Where are you going? <laughs> we were both nervous. Seth spent the trip looking out the window and then back at the pile of papers in his lap. I caught myself glancing over at him now and again, hoping that I wasn't setting him up for failure. Oh yeah, that would be a horrible feeling. We made it to the library, just at the tail end of the reading. Again, there was a table out front for signings. And for after enough people had filtered out and away from the lobby, lobby we walked up. Hi, thanks for coming. Hey, you made it! Glad to see I was convincing enough to get you to return. Seth stood there, quivering, blushing, and completely unable to speak. Once the author's face shifted to a concerned look, I knew I had to do something. Um. Nudge Seth. I nudged Seth forward, mentioning for him to start talking. It took a moment before he could find his words. So, uh, I wrote something. The author raised an eyebrow before leaning back in his seat. That's good. I didn't mean to be dismissive. I'm glad to see people writing, especially reading. But was there a reason to tell me this? Seth's voice squeaked for a moment as his eyes darted back at me. I gave him a confident smile and motioned him forward. After taking a breath, Seth tr thrust out his hands with a manuscript in them. This guy I like inspired me enough to write this book and thinks it's pretty good and he want he was saying that we should come here and talk to you about it. I mean <coughs> I wanted some advice on the next steps I should take if I want to see this published. The author saw a to himself for a moment before looking back up Seth. I get a hundred enthusiastic writers trying to pro play me with buying copies of my book or giving me gifts to get me to read their work. There's a reason publishers have slush piles, you know. Mm. Mm, I'm gonna have to be dumb. We... He's not looking for a sure thing. He's already had me and one other person read it, and he wanted some professional insight. That's all. Just flipping through a couple of papers to tell him what you think. I stood firm, watching as the author gaze darted between the two of us. You know everything? You know every Tom? No, thank you. And Harry thinks they can write. But don't get me wrong. I've seen a few diamonds in the rough. But it's not my job. Seth looked. Crestal fallen, his eyes lowered to the floor as I watched the pages sacked in his hands. Undarted, I grabbed at the first view. Maybe not, but it's my job to see that you look this over. He poured his heart into this, and I know that. You've either going to read it in here, and now, or I'm gonna start reading it and follow you until I'm done. <laughs> It he took a moment, glancing between me and Seth before laying out a sigh and turned to face Seth. Alright, first three pages. My agent would kill me if she knew I was going, I was doing here, but it's obvious you've already got one devoted fan, and that's a start. Of course! Seth's eyes went wide as the author took the pages offered and began to browse. I patted him gently on the shoulder and went to sit down, letting my body calm down from the high. As I glanced back over, the two of them were having a spirit conversation. The author seemed practically an animated and was smiling. A wave of relief rolled over me. Alright, I'll give you a call soon. I had zoned out for most of the conversation, but perked backed up when Seth came over vi vibrating with joy. He liked it! He actually liked it! He said it was rough, which I expected being a first draft. 
But he was going to take the first cap chapter to his agent. See? It's worth to take a risk every now and again. You're more just amused. You're like my guardian angel. Oh, no. Uh, no I'm not. No, I'm more in denial, so, uh, no, I'm not. Oh, come on. Once I saw someone I like getting so close to their dream, I had to do something. I like to think you would have done the same. He smiled broadly and leaned up to kiss me on the cheek. You are fairly too modest, player. Literally none of this would have happened impossible without you, which is why we must go celebrate. Um... Huh. It's supposed... I think that was supposed to say my character's name, Emery. Uh... I had been made... <sighs> I know just the place. Well, then again, there it is. My name is Emerus right there. There, barely that was a bug. <laughs> <sighs> That's an odd thing. It was still too early to go to the beat. I mean, still too early to go to the club. So we decided to swing back to my place. Seth was animated like I'd never seen before. His head was flooded with possibilities, hopes, and dreams about what this could mean. I was glad to see him happy, and did enjoy some basking in the adolescence, but I also remembered what Nick has said about the hours, the travel, what his dream meant in the end. Says enthusiasm, enthusiasm didn't stop even after we walked through the door. The instant he saw Colby, he scooped him up in a hug. I think it was the first time I ever saw my little bro turn that purple. <laughs> my goodness! I didn't think I've ever felt this energized. I'm glad to hear it. We could hang out here for a while and then all three of us can hit the club. We can have a couple of drinks, dance a little, maybe pick up a guy. <laughs> That's all you, bro. <clears throat> that sounds fantastic. Look at me! I've never danced before in my life and I'm giddy at the thought of making an A of myself. <laughs> That's the spirit. Maybe I should sit down for a moment. My head is still reeling from all this. We've got plenty of time. Why don't you go lie down for a bit? I've got a few things to do around the house. I'll check in a few. I'll check in in a few minutes. Thank you again, Hammerus. You are the most gracious host. He's cute, bro. And a good hugger. Hey, now. Hands off. I saw him first. <laughs> I also may have helped launch his dreams career. He's all yours, bro. It's pretty clear he's really just into you that way. <laughs> I chuckled at the... And I, I choke as I slide out of my coat. There was, there were still a few things to do if if we were going out tonight. I wanted up, wondered if I should get to them or check up on Seth. Excuse me. Clearly, Seth had overestimated his cinema. He was out cold and snoring softly. Multiple days in a row of writing, seemingly with little sleep, 
had clearly been tough on him. I know he wanted to celebrate, but maybe what he really needs is rest. <laughs> I must have dozed off for a second myself, because when my eyes flickered open, Seth was stretching and yawning as he got back to his feet. Ugh, what happened? You fell asleep about five hours ago. In Kobe's bed, no less. Which makes you one of the few people to just sleep in it besides him. I guess I was more exhausted than I thought. <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't more fun tonight. It's alright. We had an exciting day. That and much prefer sleeping in the same room as you to not hear from you. Amorous? Hmm? As I sat on the edge of my bed, Seth paddly soft padded softly over to me. Drapping, dropping his arms around me, he slid smoothly onto my lap and pressed his lips firmly and gently against my own. Is this where it's heading where I think it is? Oh my! <laughs> We held each other in that moment, cloaked in darkness in such a silent night, just keeping close and safe in each other's arms. When the kiss finally broke, we reluctantly on both our ends, Seth smiled down at me and rested his head on my shoulder for a moment before slowly sliding back out my lap. That's my way of saying thank you. Thank you for humoring me, pushing me, and most of all, for being willing to put up with my banishing. Not many other people would be willing to take someone back after that. I'm not most people, Seth. Indeed. And if we, that kiss was any indication, you are certainly worth waiting for. Yeah, show us your dedication if you're willing to wait for the amount of darkness, cause <laughs> sometimes my friend gets my friend probably gets grounded and I have to wait like, yeah, I've been grounded from Monday to Thursday, and Friday I was unable to speak to him, and it took Saturday. So, yeah, the time distance is really hard, but you just gotta be dedicated and know that that's the friend you want, and you need to fight for him at a private moment. Long distance relationships are sometimes doesn't work, but it's just because people just give up too easily. You just gotta keep fighting for them until eventually you succeed. Sounds like I'm trying to hit him up. I'm not. It's just I want to be with him. He makes me well, he's happy. <laughs> Don't get any wrong ideas. <gasps> you are such a flatterer. Unfortunately, I don't think I'm up for much tonight. That full body, giddy high, I was on. I was on has faded and my body is threatening to rebel against my current victular position. <laughs> um Let me take you home. Let me drive you home then. I wouldn't want you to pass out on the way and get in an accident. It's alright. It's not that far and it's and the traffic will be light. Besides, my place is an absolute pig state right now, and I couldn't bear to have you see it. That. Have you seen my house? <laughs> Only if you are absolutely sure. I am. Fair warning, though. Keep your schedule clear. I intend to make up for the half hearted dates with someone particular. <laughs> well, I look forward to it. I can't wait to see what you might have planned. Just make sure to pull out of all the stops. I assure you, not a single stop will remain unpulled in my entire apartment. He gathered his things together, and after another peck on the cheek, goodbye, he made his way out the door. Doubts still linger about Seth's book. I brought us together for a moment, but I couldn't help worry it might also break us apart. Then again, that's what staying was all about, it seems. Being willing to put yourself out there and take a chance, then you can take a, make a connection. The free lunches and dinners just sweeten the deal. Yeah.
Save game. Game save. Alright, so I'm gonna have to end this episode here. Is the other girl now available? Come on. She's still not available. Come on. <sighs> anyway. Oh. Oh, hello. Make out point. Your house. <laughs> Apparently, this still being made. <laughs> but so far, it's a really good game, and I'm enjoying it. Every moment of it. I was going to end the episode here, but now I'm actually now curious. I'm in like 44 minutes in, so let's give it a few more minutes. Let's check out Makeup Point. Hmm. Ready. Well, there's not much to do in the interaction otherwise. Let's see. Oh, there's so much possibilities. Ooh. I hope they do get the ground doing the game, because it's, it's fairly entertaining. Um, coffee shop. Give me a lot, pal. I'm exploring my surroundings a bit. <laughs> hmm. That's a cool pool. Library. And nothing. Um, apartment complex? Hmm. Sorry if I'm going silent or not, my... My throat is dry from all that speaking. <sighs> Amorous. Well, at least you still can be here, though. actually turns on here. <laughs> well, I'm gonna have to end this episode here. I think the only thing we can do is just do set. Probably I have to go to the beginning and focus on the other girl. And probably. We'll see. Uh, thank you all for watching. This is Dragon Lover Maniac flying off. Bye-bye!